seedling production is risky due to fungi and disease agents attacking seeds during germination, especially young plants. There is a natural solution for removing and preventing fungi and other pathogens. But let's first look at the most important items in growing seedlings. In addition to temperature and sunlight, humidity is a significant factor for good and successful growth of seedlings in room conditions. It is best when the substrate looks slightly dry at the top of the pot because then it is moist in depth. Constantly wet substrate is a very common mistake when growing seedlings. Too much moisture, heat and lack of daylight contribute to the elongation of the stem. The importance of temperature in plant development. The optimal temperature for seedlings should be from 59 to 68 degrees. If the temperature drops a few degrees below the specified average, all the effort can be ruined. In a situation like this, cucumbers are the first to be affected because of their high water content. Houses are typically too warm for seedlings, and relying solely on daylight from a window is inadequate. Seedlings need a minimum of 10 hours of natural daylight. After sprouting, keep the temperature, humidity and daylight, avoiding direct sunlight to prevent drying and death. Optimum temperatures for the growth and development of tomatoes. Tomatoes require a lot of heat for successful growth and development. It begins to germinate at 50 to 53 degrees, but the optimum temperature for germination is between 73 and 77 degrees. Pollination ceases below 59 degrees, growth halts below 48, young plants die at 41, and adult plants perish at 30 degrees. It makes sense to delay sowing during a cold spring, and you can see why. Unlock the full potential of your crops with our carefully researched germination temperature table. Discover the ideal temperatures for some of our most popular crops and watch your harvest thrive. See how you can strengthen weak roots and prevent fungal growth in seedlings after planting. In one container we pour 100 milliliters of hot water and into that water, we pour 10 grams of cinnamon powder. Stirring for a few minutes, the cinnamon will completely dissolve. When it melts, stir for a few more minutes, and then add another 900 milliliters of water or rainwater to make 1 liter of solution. This solution stimulates root growth but also prevents the appearance of harmful fungi that usually occur in conditions of excessive humidity in seedlings or vegetables. Fungi are manifested by the appearance of white dots on the substrate, and cinnamon is known as an antifungal hormone. The solution should be used once every 15 days until the fungi are destroyed. It is advisable to sprinkle cinnamon powder in areas with fungi, especially in greenhouses where they can appear due to overwatering or condensation caused by poor ventilation. If a white coating appears on the ground, sprinkle it with cinnamon and mix gently. To combat these pathogens, the recommended method is to water seedlings instead of spraying them. That will prevent the growth of fungi. If you have accidentally damaged healthy plants, sprinkle with ground cinnamon because the spice will quickly regenerate the damaged areas. Due to the strengthening of the stem, the seedlings should be occasionally exposed to the wind. Remember, too high temperature, too much moisture and infected substrates are the most common cause for the development of various pathogens. The basic measure of protection against many diseases in nursery production is healthy seeds and sterile substrate. Place it on foil or a table, never directly on the ground. One more important thing. Many use hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, to soak the seeds as well as during the development phase. This chemical compound of water and oxygen is not so harmless. It is used for cleaning, disinfection, dyeing and bleaching of hair even without the addition of dye. Is this then something I will give to my plants? Absolutely not, because hydrogen is a harmful chemical compound. It's a very strong oxidizer, just like chlorine bleach and it'll kill plants if the dilution isn't sufficient. Plants planted outdoors would not need oxygenation because the plants receive rainwater and exhale oxygen. Why organic farmers don't use hydrogen peroxide solution when watering their plants? Hydrogen peroxide does not accelerate plant growth if the soil is properly aerated. 
Poorly aerated soil is usually waterlogged, so watering with anything is not a good plan, and its effect is very transient as it quickly breaks down into oxygen and water. Great effects can only be achieved in laboratory conditions. Out in the field, even the most careful applications would not bring enough improvement. If you notice mold on plant leaves or root rot on perennials in your garden, it is safer to use baking soda, which is effective for this purpose. The peroxide will kill both good and bad microorganisms, leaving a vacuum that the bad pathogens will quickly fill. You need beneficial microbes living in a symbiotic relationship with your plant's roots to provide your plants with the necessary micronutrients. It is important to note that although this compound occurs naturally, hydrogen peroxide is toxic to our cells. This is because it will stimulate the oxidation of our proteins, lipids, and DNA. In simpler terms, it triggers unfavorable changes in our cells that prevent normal functioning. This is one of the reasons why hydrogen peroxide is believed to promote cell aging and even cause cancer. To deal with all plant diseases and prevent the development of fungi and various pests, it is necessary to prevent their appearance in time. Here is another natural mixture for protection against various pests and fungi. It is used for all types of vegetables and can be used until planting in the ground. This powerful mixture requires only three simple ingredients, 5 cloves of garlic, half a lemon, and water. The combination of these natural elements will protect your seedlings from fungi, various diseases, and pests. Peel 5 cloves of garlic and add crushed garlic to 950 milliliters of lukewarm water. Then add half a squeezed lemon. Mix and leave for 24 hours at room temperature. After 24 hours, strain the mixture into 3 liters of water, preferably rainwater. Mix everything well. This mixture can be used every 10 days. Use a plastic bottle for easier watering. Make a small hole in the cap, so it will be easier and more precise to water the seedling without watering the leaves. Do not spray on the leaf. The smell of lemon and garlic will prevent all pests and contribute to healthier and stronger plants in a natural way. Follow me and hit the like button for more useful tips. Thanks for watching.